Hello. Uh, I think, yeah, we're, we're back again. So we're, as you can see, we've moved the camera and we're focused now on the scroll saw. We've got our wood prepared. Now, as you can see, we've marked it out. As I mentioned, there's two methods that you can use for marking out. You can use um, the pa paper where you literally stick the paper onto the wood, or you can uh, mark out with a template, just mark around the template, draw it on. We've drawn on with pencil. The other thing then that we've done in terms of preparation, you can see we've drilled the holes. And that can either be done using uh, a wheel brace, a pillar drill, or a hand drill. So we prepared that, but what we're gonna do is to demonstrate how we get that piece of wood. That's a recycled piece of mahogany that we got on there, and we're gonna demonstrate on there how we actually cut that out. You will pick up, we haven't managed to completely close the, the door because there's several wires coming through. So apologies that in the background, you're gonna have a little bit of noise coming through from the Hegner, but it's as good as we, we can get it. So I'm gonna give Dad the uh, thumbs up and he's gonna start cutting out and I'm gonna explain what he's actually doing. Okie doke, there we are. Yeah. So as you can see, he's turned the uh, scroll saw on and he will be working his way around the outside. And this is the main method then that we use for our love spoons. Uh, working with the scroll saw then, this isn't our main scroll saw, this is our second one. But basically our, our main scroll saw is in a position that wasn't as easy to get to. So we're demonstrating using this one here. So you can see, it's a beautiful kit to work with. The way we do it, we work with a reverse tooth blade. And that is our preference. You have standard blades, you have things like spiral blades, and then there's a, a reverse tooth blade. And that's the one that we find is most effective for what we do. The number on the blade, it's a number nine. So a number nine reverse tooth blade, that's what we use. And that does a really good job for us in terms of cutting out. Other things then to remember is when you're setting up your scroll saw is to have it on a solid base. Now this one here is, it, it, it does actually move this base, which is not ideal. It's better off to have it bolted, the machine bolted to the base and the base bolted to the floor. That's the best thing that you can sort of have as a setup. But what we've done is we've put we've weighted it so you're trying to reduce the amount of vibration because if you are having issues with your scroll saw it's quite possible that that may be the cause of your issues then is is that you've got too much vibration on on the machine itself so by putting weights on there it's just trying to reduce the amount of vibration from the machine as you can see, what that is doing then, he's cutting all around that basic outline. It's the same sort of thing that you would do if you were using something like a coping saw. You would just cut that basic outline around uh, the outside. Once he's done that then, he will feed the blade into the internal cuts and it, it's the same sort of process. The Hegner scroll saw then, we've had a couple of different scroll saws and basically we've stuck with the Hegner scroll saw because we find that is by far the, the best scroll saw that we've worked with. Um, they do say there's a test with it. You can put a coin, something like a 20 pence piece. I don't know what the equivalent is in, in other countries. Um, our... our uh, our American viewers, perhaps you can enlighten us in the comment section below, what would be the equivalent of a, of a coin that you can put on its sides, and if it doesn't fall over, you know that you've got your machine set up correctly. Because if it does fall over, there's basically too much vibration on the machine, and you, you need to look at a setup that reduces the amount of vibration that you get. So you can see Dad there, he's 
I'm just checking on the camera. Yeah, he's well on his way. He's cut the one side of the love spoon, and now he's just working his way, cutting round the other side of the spoon. So it gives us our basic profile of a love spoon. And all of this is preparation work, getting ready for the actual hand carving. We've done a few different videos, and we'll add this to a playlist. We've got a playlist of Hegner scroll saw videos, as well as adding it to a new playlist of our live streams. But um, yeah, you, when we, when, when you, if you do have a little look at those other ones, you, you'll see that we do suggest that certain woods cut better on the scroll saw than others. So things like cherry, they tend to burn more easily when being cut with the Hegner scroll saw. As the one that Dad is working with and demonstrating there, that is a piece of mahogany, and that tends to cut much better, much easier to, to work with. Things like teak, again, they're easy for the scroll saw. Um, oak and ash, they're somewhere more in the middle. So depending on your woods depends on, on how it actually cuts out. You can see he's gone on to doing the internal cuts. So what you do, you feed the blade through the hole that you've drilled, either with a wheel brace, a hand drill, or a pillar drill, something like that. You feed the blade into that hole, and then you cut out the shape that you've marked. So that is why we use the scroll saw. It's perfect for what we're doing on a, a daily basis for getting our love spoons ready uh, for hand carving. And you can do any shapes. You're, you're limited on the... There are limitations to it. For instance, the, the throat of the scroll saw, it, it's, it's sort of, I think, you know, you're talking a few inches, uh, I don't know, maybe 20, 20 centimetres at a push. I'm not sure. I'd have to... That's one thing I'd have to check for you, um, of how thick the piece of wood is. But for us doing love spoons, it's, it's not really a problem because our love spoons, we tend to cut them to a thickness of around about a half an inch, just under about 1.2 centimetres. Um, and that, at that thickness, the number nine reverse tooth blade can cope with that job easily and do a, a really nice quality finish that afterwards you don't have to spend a lot of time sanding or re-going over. It's that good a finish. And that sort of site, it, it's, it's ideal for, for that sort of width. Some of the other projects we do, some of the one-off love spoons that we carve, especially in our own family collection, because of the limitations of the throat of the machine, you can't actually get the wood into it to scroll saw it out and, and it's a bit too demanding as well for that blade so we are using a Hegner multi-cut 2s as with anything there, there is a, a sort of limitation to it but if you're making love spoons and wood carving and making them sort of in a similar style to ourselves it is a, a worthwhile investment if you are starting to get more serious about making uh, more love spoons so you can see how it's taken shape. We've got that outline, that profile around the outside. We are now working on those internal cuts. You're feeding, you're feeding the blade into those internal cuts. You've got that quick release on the top, so it's a quick process. You just add the tension back to the arm after you've fed it in, cut that basic profile out, and basically job done. Now there are other stages to the process, which again we will demonstrate. Our next live stream, as I mentioned, we're going to demonstrate how we use a coping saw to do exactly the same process. When Dad started the workshop here back in 1975, he wouldn't have been using a scroll saw. It was virtually 20 years before he decided to invest in a scroll saw. He would have been using the coping saw to do the internal cuts. But the nice thing with the love spoon, there's no rules and regulations. You, you can do whatever you want to. You can do it in different styles, using different methods. Um, yeah, and a, and a nice process, a nice material to work with, and um, therefore everybody to, to enjoy. 
He's just going on to his last cut there, I think, and that will be um, the the completion then. And that love spoon is is ready for for hand carving. Uh, as mentioned, mahogany is a good wood to use. Some people ask us, then, where do you get your woods from? That is recycled timber. We've had some recently from an old bench. We get mahoganies from old furniture, fixtures and fittings, doors, window frames, skirting boards, all of those sorts of things. So those are different areas, different ways of actually sourcing the wood itself. There we are. Now I'm just going to check through the window again. I do believe that he's completed that demonstration. Have you finished? Oh, he's got, sorry. I'm one too early, he's on to his last cut. So he's just doing his last cut on there. He's just signaled to me through the window that he's on his last cut. But you can see there's nothing too complicated about it. If any of you are watching this video or watching this live stream, because we're live now, and you're contemplating investing in a, in a scroll saw, as we mentioned, you want that good solid base Hegner do actually sell a base as well. By the way, there's no affiliate marketing. We've got no link with Hegner other than we use their scroll saw to um, cut things out. So there's no affiliation there at all. Um, yet you can buy that base and that can be useful then because that should do the job. We actually made our own base and bolted that to the floor because it's all about the amount of vibration. If it's moving about too much and you're getting too much vibration, uh, then it basically you're not going to get the machine performing as it should do. Um, the other things then, Hegner do sell an add-on. There's an arm that they sell, and that arm can be used to sort of clamp. It's good for beginners, people learning how to do it, and it depends on the individual because... Here at the workshop, myself and Dad, we prefer to use the scroll saw, as you can see it, without that arm holding the wood down. We find it a bit of a nuisance and it gets in the way. My brother Math then, he does a lot of scroll sawing and helps us out a lot. He finds it far better with the arm. So depending on the individual, that may or may not be a good investment. What I would suggest is to try it sort of as it comes without the addition of the arm to hold it down and if you if you if you find it difficult if it doesn't suit you then that might be a worthwhile investment is to invest in uh, the arm that actually holds the wood down for you it's one less thing to think about personally I don't like it I prefer to control with my one hand and to hold it down with the other one so your one hand is acting as a guide and your other hand actually holds the piece of wood down. There we are. He should just about be coming to the end of uh, that last internal cut. Hopefully that gives you a good idea for how you can prepare them. Our next live stream, as I've, I've said a few times now, uh, that will be using the coping saw. And I'll probably get Dad to demonstrate that as well as doing a bit myself because I've always had access to the scroll saw, so it's always been easier for myself uh, using that it's just what I've grown up using but dad then he's he's got a bit more experience with working with the coping saw I enjoy using the coping saw but it's getting that sort of finish uh, other things then that we we haven't demonstrated is things like shaping the back of the bowl we 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 will do demonstrations showing you how we do that and there's again two methods you can either do it using well you could use a, a coping saw but you can also use a belt sander that's one method that you can use is a belt sander to um, sand the back of the bowl and give it a nice rounded shape or you can hand carve it and then hand sand it but those will all be different live demonstrations that we sort of um, that we will that we will show you in the future uh, i'm just going to check with him he's just gone on to something else so i'm going to see what he's working on there uh, oh yeah, he's just working on a, another spoon. So I carry on uh, showing that in the background, uh, just as I sort of uh, conclude with the live stream. Some of the things then we've got coming up, we've got our documentary, that's coming up soon. Um, 
And that is where we focus on the stories behind our family collection of love spoons. For those who know a bit about us, we've got a, a family collection, goes back to 1969. We've got one for every year since then. Uh, we've also then got a, a few live streams involving other people um, and live streams outside of YouTube as well. So hopefully they'll be coming up. We're going to be doing different demonstrations, different things we're going to focus on. We're going to look, we've got an idea for looking, focusing on animal carvings. We do a lot of relief style animal carvings on Love Spoons. Um, flowers and nature, we're also going to look at. We're going to do a live demonstration as well. And I'm looking for any of yourselves, because as I've been saying earlier this morning in the previous live stream, your contribution to our YouTube channel is, is invaluable. That is really what keeps us going. And that's, that's the focus of what we're doing, is to provide things that are useful to you. And one idea that we've, we've got coming up is to do a live stream where we design a spoon and then take you through the different stages over sort of several weeks. But we want if possible, thinking of three symbols, and you can put this in the comment section of any of our videos, have a little think of three symbols for us to design around. And we'll incorporate them into a design, and we'll demonstrate how you go from designing based around three symbols given by yourselves. So if you can contribute that, we'd be really, really grateful to you three different symbols and show how we go from designing to finished love spoon. So three symbols to include upon a love spoon and we'll do several live streams demonstrating the entire process from designing and what we probably find in the live stream is you'll actually see the first live stream where we design it we may end up not completing a design because we may design something and think no, that's not right and then have to go back over the process. But hopefully, that will give you an idea of all of the stages and all the processes that we have to go through and all the methods that we use to actually get from an idea of a design based around three symbols. And ideally, we'd like a little bit of a story and a theme behind those symbols. And then going on to our finished love spoon. So there we are. Hopefully seeing that cutting out on the scroll saw will give everyone a better idea for how we get from our raw piece of wood to uh, going through that process of preparing for carving. Hopefully some of those ideas are useful. As I said, if you can put in the comment section either below this or on any of our videos, three symbols for us to work around. This will be coming up in the next few months. Try and put a story into it, and then we can go through that whole process. And perhaps as well, because I know the, that you're all making your own spoons and doing different projects, perhaps you can join us on that journey, and you, know, you can have a go at doing the same things. And then afterwards, we'd be delighted to share your ideas and your designs that you came up with using the same three symbols. So there we are. Hopefully all of that is useful. Hopefully it's interesting. Thank you all again for watching. And as always, we'll be back again soon with more videos. Thank you all.